Now suppose that the firm is a farmer and he's got two farms, farm one and farm two. In a lesson quite a while ago, we showed that if the price of fertilizer is the same in the mar in where farm one is located and where farm two is located, then the marginal product of fertilizer should be the same in the two places. Now I want to claim that the marginal cost of production should be the same in the two places. So this is taking into account both water and fertilizer. And the proof goes in the same kind of way as the other proofs. Suppose you had unequal marginal cost. So let's suppose the marginal cost 1 oops, was 2 and marginal cost 2 was, let's say, 6. The units of marginal cost are or dollars per bushel. I want to claim that the firm is doing something wrong. In order to show that, I need to suggest a change. And the change is going to be to, okay, now let's think about it. Farm 2 is a bad place to farm because it has a high marginal cost. So what I'm going to do is suggest a change where you decrease the corn output of Farm 2 by one bushel of corn and you increase the corn output of Farm 1 by one bushel of corn. Let's see what change And uh, what, what, how that changes total cost. Okay, so marginal cost, you'll recall, is a change in total cost divided by change in corn output. So let's work on firm, farm two first. For farm two, delta Q is minus one bushel. And so you're saving, so delta TC is going to be minus six. So you're producing one less bushel of corn in farm two. The marginal cost a production in Farm 2 is $6 a bushel, so you're saving $6 in costs. For Farm 1, you're producing one more bushel. The marginal cost of Farm 1 is $2 a bushel, so if you're producing one more bushel, it's going to cost you another $2. The overall effect for your entire company you're saving six dollars in farm two and it's costing you two extra dollars in farm one so in total you saved four dollars what about change in total revenue well the price of corn hasn't changed and perhaps less obviously the quantity of corn hasn't changed either because if you increase corn output by one on farm one and decrease it at farm two, the, you have a zero net effect for bushels of corn. So Q is fixed and P is fixed, so there's no change in total revenue. No change in total revenue. A $4 decrease in total cost, you're doing better. And therefore, what you were doing before was dumb. Because you, you should have done what I just suggested you do, you would have improved. And what you were doing before was you were having unequal marginal costs. So that was a bad thing, so you shouldn't do that. And I think it's pretty easy to see from this example that if the costs had been equal, so instead of having 2 and 6, if I had the same number, then this wouldn't have, I wouldn't have gotten the same result. So the conclusion we draw from this is that if you've got two farms, or in general if a, if a company has two different places where it produces output, then it should equate the marginal cost in one and the marginal cost in the other. 
Now, how about if the firm sells in two different markets? This is getting a little bit away from the assumption of perfect competition, but it, the math fits very closely with what we're doing, so I'm going to pursue it. And I'm going to claim that if the firm sells in two different markets and it has a choice in marginal revenue, now I know competitive firms don't have choices in, in terms of marginal revenue, but this actually has an implication for them too. And what we're soon going to study are non-competitive firms that do have a choice in marginal revenue. Then I'm going to, what, I, what I claim is that the marginal revenue in the two markets needs to be the same. How do I prove that? I'm going to prove that if they're unequal, then the firm is doing something dumb. So you have unequal marginal revenue. For example, marginal revenue. And in fact, uh, let me use a slightly different notation. Instead of market one and market two, I'm going to change that to market three and market four. Because I don't want you to think that farm that this firm has two farms and two markets and one farm goes to one market and one farm goes to the other market. This firm might only have one farm. We might have ten farms. We're not thinking about the farms right now, we're thinking about the markets right now. Okay, so suppose that uh, marginal revenue market three is is two dollars a bushel and marginal revenue in market four is six six dollars a bushel. And you know that marginal revenue is a change in total revenue divided by the change in quantity. I claim you're doing something dumb. What you ought to do is sell one more bushel of corn in market four where marginal revenue is higher and one less bushel of corn in marginal revenue three. Now I'm not actually saying you should definitely sell one less bushel of corn in market three. What I'm saying is if you did this, this is just a way of showing that what you're doing right now is dumb. I don't know what the right thing to do is, but this is certainly the wrong thing to do. So if you do this, let's see how it affects total revenue. In market three, you're reducing output by uh, reducing sales by one bushel, and so you're losing two dollars in total revenue. In market four, you're increasing sales by one bushel, and so you're gaining six dollars in total revenue. The sum from doing both things is an addition of four dollars. So total revenue has gone up. What's happened to total cost? Well, it's unchanged because you're not changing production; you're just changing where you you're selling things. And and, and you can see that you're not changing production. The the sum of plus one minus one bushel and plus one bushel is zero. So production is unchanged, and so costs are unchanged. But revenue goes up, which means profit goes up if you make this change. And therefore, what you were doing before was not profit maximizing, and so it was dumb, and so you shouldn't do that. What were you doing before? Well, you had unequal marginal revenues before. So what does this prove? This proves that actually the marginal revenue in one market should be the same as the marginal revenue in the other market. Now, it is possible to combine the two sides of this screen. The, if, you, if you have a firm that has farm one and farm two and market three and market four, let's say it has a one farm in Utah and one farm in Colorado and one of its markets is Canada and another market is China, then you want the marginal cost in the in the two farms to be the same and you want the marginal revenue in the two markets to be the same. And of course, uh, it's not the case that there's an identity between, let's say one farm goes to, all its exports go to uh, China and the other farm, all its exports go to um, Canada, that uh, there's no connection between one and two on one side and three and four on the other side. But so, so the general property is, uh, we saw before, marginal products should be the same as long as the input prices are the same. On the left-hand side, marginal cost should be the same if you have more than one place where you're producing output. And on the right-hand side, marginal revenue should be the same if you have more than one place where you're selling. Now, I said 
that the right-hand side actually has some implication even for a competitive firm. What I meant there is, if it's a competitive firm can't pick more, its marginal revenue, but um, it still is going to want to sell where marginal revenue is, is equal in all of its markets. You can have unequal marginal revenue, for that matter, unequal. You can have unequal marginal revenue if in one of the markets you're not selling anything, because then the proof doesn't work anymore. You can't reduce. Oh, sorry, I didn't do it the other way. You can't. Uh, you can't reduce. Well, I'll get it right eventually. You can't reduce output by one bushel if you're not producing any output. If it's zero already, you can't go to minus one. And so, uh, you and, and so the the idea that uh, the margin revenues have to equal isn't true if in the place where you have the lowest margin revenue you're producing zero. Similarly, the notion that marginal costs have to equal isn't true if in one of the farms, in the farm with the highest marginal cost, you're actually producing zero, because then you can't, then the proof doesn't work, you can't subtract one. So, uh, so the, what a competitive firm would do is it would sell in the market where the marginal revenue was highest. And if there were several markets that had equal marginal revenue and they were all high, the h higher than anywhere else, then that's where the firm would sell, and it wouldn't sell in the other places where where marginal revenue was lower. And that's also true for a non-competitive firm. Um, you can, uh, I if if you've got places where you aren't selling, then the marginal revenue doesn't have to be equal to the other marginal revenues, and it it can't be.